Parabolas and Circles A parabola is a set of all points equal distance from a line and a fixed point not on the line. The line is called the directrix and the point is called the focus. If you look at this picture down here, the focus would be a point about right here and the directrix is this line drawn here. The point on the parabola halfway between the focus and the directrix is called the vertex. The vertex is actually on the parabola. It's either the lowest or highest point of the parabola. The line containing the focus in the vertex is the axis. A parabola is symmetric with respect to the, its axis. It is sometimes referred to as the axis of symmetry. The lattice rectum is a chord parallel to the directrix and passing through the focus. The lattice rectum will help us graph our parabola. So basically it is a chord going through the focus here, connecting on both sides of the parabola straight across. Okay. Below are pictures of the vertical parabola and the horizontal parabola. They are very similar, yet one is up and down and the other is left and right. Please note the differences in the form, the vertex, the axis of symmetry, the focus, the directrix, the direction of opening, and the length of the lattice rectum. You are responsible for knowing all of these different equations, both for vertical parabolas and horizontal parabolas. All right, let's look at our first example. You are asked to find the vertex, focus, axis of symmetry, direction of opening, directrix, and the length of the lattice rectum of the following parabola, x squared minus 4x minus 8y plus 28 equals 0. Then you are asked to graph the parabola. Our first step is going to be to put it in standard form. All right, so to do this, we have to first recognize that this is going to be a vertical parabola because our x value is being squared. So we will need to eventually solve for y. When we are doing this, it's easiest if we keep our x value positive, which it is. So we're going to move the negative 8y to the other side. So that will make it 8y equals x squared minus 4x plus 28. I'm going to leave the 8 with the y for the time being because it will make it easier at the end to solve and put it into the standard form. So right now, we need to write x squared and the 4x as a perfect squared. So what we are going to do is rewrite this as x squared minus 4x, leave a space, and add 28 on the edge. Now we're going to complete the square here. So remember, to complete the square, we take negative 4 divided by 2, which would be negative 2, and then square it, which would be 4. So we're going to add 4 here. If we add 4 to the right side of the equation, we must also subtract 4 to the right side of the equation to keep it even. So right now, we have 8y equals x minus 2 squared plus 24. At this point, we will go ahead and solve for y completely by dividing everything by 8. So we have y equals 1 eighth x minus 2 squared plus 3. This is our equation in standard form. All right, once we have our equation in standard form, we can then go ahead and find all the different things we were asked to find. Let's start with our vertex. We know that um, it is a vertical parabola, so our vertex is going to be hk from above. So that's going to be x minus h plus k. So our vertex is just going to be 2, 3. Next, we need to find our focus. To find our focus, we're going to use the formula given here. So our focus is simply going to be 2, and then we're going to take our k value plus 1 over 4 times a. In this case, we get our focus to be 2, 5. Our directrix, oh, I'm sorry, our axis of symmetry is just going to be um, x equals h. So we have x equals 2. Make sure that you put the x there and not just 2. 
the direction of opening is going to be up. We determine this because of our A value is positive 1 8th. Since it's a positive value, our direction of opening is up. Index x for our directrix. Our directrix, we would simply plug it into this formula, y equals k minus 1 over 4a. When you do this, you will get y equals 1. And the last thing is uh, the length of the lattice rectum. So to find this length, we are going to take 1 over 1 eighth, the absolute value of that. So 1 divided by 1 eighth is going to be 8 units. So the length of our lattice rectum is 8 units. All right, now we are asked to graph this function. So to do that, let's start by graphing our vertex at 2, 3. And then we will also graph our focus of 2, 5. Okay, so we have our vertex and our focus. Once we have our focus, we can use the length of the lattice rectum to help us determine two other points on the parabola. Since the total length of the lattice rectum is 8, we know that th there is a chord parallel to the directrix going through the um, focus here. So since the total length is 8, we can go 4 units on each side. All right. Now, once we have those two points, this here would be our lattice rectum. It's a total of eight units long. We can sketch our parabola through those points given. Be sure to put arrows at the end of your parabola because it continues on infinitely up. Okay. Now on to the next example. In the next example, it says write an equation of a parallel, or sorry, parabola with a focus of 3, 5 and a directrix of y equals 1. All right, we can go ahead and sketch this just to see what exactly we're looking at. And if we were to sketch this, we would see that our focus is 3, 5, our directrix is y equals 1. What this tells us immediately is that we have a vertical parabola. Now you're asked to write the equation of it. So let's go ahead and find the vertex first. We know that the vertex is um, directly in between the directrix and the focus. So we can go ahead and see that there are four units in between. So if we go halfway, we will be at the ordered pair 3, 3. This is going to be our vertex. Okay. So if our vertex is 3, 3, that tells us that our h value is 3 and our k value is 3. So right now what we have for our equation is y equals a times x minus 3 squared plus 3. So all we have left here is to determine what our a value is. To determine our A value, we can either use our focus or our directrix. In this case, I'm going to pick the directrix to use. So we're going to use this to find A. All right. We know that the formula to find the directrix is Y equals K minus 1 over 4A. So at this point, We know that y is 1. That's given to us right here. We know that our k value is 3. And we just fill in everything else from the equation. So we have 1 equals 3 minus 1 over 4a. So from here, we're just going to simplify and solve for a. So we have negative 2 equals negative 1 over 4a. So that means that um, positive 8a equals 1. And if we solve for a, we would get a equals 1 over 8. Now we just simply plug that back into our original function, y equals 1 8 x minus 3 squared plus 3. This would be 
our equation in standard form. Okay, now we're going to go on to circles. Circles are going to be a little bit easier for us. Remember that a circle is a collection of points equal distance from a fixed point. The fixed point is called the center. The distance from the center to any point on the circle is the radius of the circle. And a segment containing the center whose endpoints are both on the circle is a diameter of the circle. The radius r equals one half the diameter d. The standard equation for a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. The center is at hk and the radius is r. Write an equation of a circle with center negative 4, 3 and radius 6. You're just going to simply plug in your hk values and your r value. So in this case we would have x minus negative 4 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 6 squared. When we simplify this, x plus 4 squared plus y minus 3 squared equals 36. Our next example says write the equation x squared plus y squared plus 2y equals 8 in hk form. Find the center, radius, domain, and range of the circle. Then sketch the circle. All right, we must first start by putting this in standard form. To do that, we are going to rewrite x squared plus y squared plus 2y, leave a space equals 8. We must complete the square here to write this as a perfect square. So remember, 2 divided by 2 is 1, and 1 squared is 1. If we add 1 to the left side of the equation, we must also add 1 to the right. So we're left with x squared plus y plus 1 squared equals 9. What this tells us right now is our center is 0, negative 1, and our radius is 3. Okay, before we find our domain and range, let's go ahead and sketch the circle. We're going to start with plotting the center, 0, negative 1. And since our radius is 3, we're going to go left, down, up, and right, 3 units. Okay. Now that we have our circle sketched, we can go ahead and determine that our domain, remember is our x-coordinates, is going to be from negative 3 to 3. Be sure to include brackets here. And our range, our y-values, is going to be from negative 4 to 2. And we have answered all the questions for this example. All right, now let's talk about normal and tangent lines of the circle. A line is said to be normal to a curve at a point if it is perpendicular to the tangent to the curve at that point. So in this picture is just an example of what we're talking about. We have a circle with our center point here. If we draw a line directly out, it's considered normal. If there is another line, tangent line, going, crossing it, sorry, on the circle, forming a 90 degree angle, meaning they are perpendicular. All right, let's look at this example here. Given x squared plus y squared equals 169, find the equation of the normal and tangent lines at the point 5, negative 12. Okay? So, first of all, let's start and say, all right, our center is 0, 0. Okay. We know that our normal line is going to go through our center point, and it must also go through the point 5, negative 12. So let's start by finding our normal line. So to find this equation, we're going to first find our slope.
and we get our slope to be negative 12 fifths. Since our slope is negative 12 fifths and it goes through the equation, or sorry, through the point 0, 0, we know that the equation of our normal line is going to be y equals negative 12 fifths x. Now we must find our tangent line. Remember our tangent line oops, goes to the point 5, negative 12 and is perpendicular to our normal line. Since the slope of our normal line is negative 12 over 5, our slope of the tangent line is going to be 5 over 12. So to find our equation, we're simply going to put it in point slope form, y equals, sorry, y plus 12 equals 5 over 12 times x minus 5. And then if you're asked to put it in slope intercept form, you would just simply solve for y and you should get y equals 5 over 12x minus 169 over 12.